Hey, pumpkin. Good morning. Look at you now running away from the camera. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice, isn't it, pumpkin? Yeah, good girl. Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. It's a beautiful day. Got some new orchids opened up this morning. It's kind of backlit and hard to see, but trust me, it's beautiful. Lots of spikes and fun things happening inside. Not a ton going on outside. So let's go to a garden tour. But I should start with something pretty and fun to look at since outside it's mostly just gloom. It's March, not much to see yet, but there's plenty to talk about. That's for sure. Where are the single dog? One, what, where are the dogs? What's going on? What are you doing? It's a gorgeous day. Let's go outside. Come on, Tobes. There we go. Oh, you're limping, old man. That's not okay. Come on, fresh air does the body good. Spring, finally, first tour of the year of 2021. Things are still rough out here from everything that happened in 2020. Let's not revisit all that mess. We're at that time of year where I'm spending most of my time focusing on it, clean up and doing things that well, I typically would have done in the fall, but you know, last fall things were unique. So I have some of my perennial planters here that you can tell. Really time to get in and do some trimming on. This one had, oh, I don't remember what was in here. Off to a great start, right? There are some sea oats and just various perennials that were really pretty. This is the third year or will be the third year for this planter. So it's probably time to divide it up or at least remove a whole bunch of soil and put some fresh mix in there so they have something better to go with. Look at all these fun seed heads. Lots of fun seed heads on this one. This whole planter here is put together more for fall appeal. So there won't be much to look at in this one for a while, but that's okay. Mostly just happy to see that there's some action down there below the soil. Things are starting to move or above the soil. Things are coming up from the soil. Needle palm back here, doing well. Wasn't expecting that at all since, you know, multiple days at negative five degrees back in February. February was rough, really rough on the garden. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but this one, zero protection, did just fine. Like, totally fine, just didn't skip a beat. Thought I saw some action coming out down here from the Lespideza. This is that big, I think it's called a tight, like a Japanese clover bush, something like that. The Lespideza thumbergii comes out, has a fun cascade and gets covered with pink flowers. The pollinators love this plant. It's cut down every fall, comes back into a whole new, like I'd say probably about an eight foot long shrub every year. I was wrong. It was just a leaf hanging out on top of there. So nothing moving from that yet. The green giant, this got planted up last summer, mid to late summer, and it's, done really well. I didn't put any type of anti-transpirant or anything on it during the winter time, which really isn't necessary where I live, but sometimes you just never know when it's the first year in the ground and it got planted kind of late in the summer. Didn't seem to mind it though. It's looking pretty good. It's finally starting to green back out. You know, these turn brown during the winter, which is the only thing I don't like about them, but I do love that they grow very quickly. They're fairly inexpensive and they stay pretty dense too. They're not too prone to lots of like harsh winter burn or anything like that, at least not here at my location. Probably won't do that much this year, but hopefully next year and the year after it'll start to get moving and fill in the space here and kind of, you know, block out the background over there, get some more privacy going on over here. Vanilla strawberry hydrangeas. Not much to see here. It's time to cut these back. That'll be happening in the next vlog that comes out. I'm gonna be talking about a lot in this video more about the things that I need to do. And those will be things that'll be happening over the next week or two in the weekend vlogs. I'm gonna go really hardcore with their cutback this year because these they aren't one of the panicle hydrangeas that <laughs> was bred to have nice, sturdy, upright growth. They come out and then the flower heads, these mops are so heavy that they hang and droop really far. And they get so big that they tend to encroach on the pathway here. So I'm going to, instead of being kind of timid with my spring prune, I'm gonna probably, I'm basically gonna cut off everything that's coming off of the main growth from in there, which is totally fine. It'll regrow all of that. It's going to end up making things more full and hopefully we'll have more flower heads because they bloom on new wood and it'll be even more new growth coming out. That's the plan anyways. These also, I might be moving these. I had had them framing this walkway for a few years now and they've gotten big enough that they needed to be repotted. I got only one of them repotted because with all the pandemic planting last year, nursery supplies were just gone. So it's only able to 
have one pot big enough to move them up. And uh, I decided I don't think I want two of those great big gray pots. I don't think I even want two of those on each side of the staircase. I don't like the way it looks. So these will probably get moved into the landscape, either in the backyard or into the front yard. And then I'll switch back to using these blue planters to go on each side of the staircase with something that will be a little bit better for the spot because the sun has changed as the trees have grown. These used to get just the perfect amount of sun right here. And now it's a little bit more of a tricky spot. This side's pretty shady, like most of the day, at least I'd say around early summer and on, pretty shady over here and that side gets like a couple more hours of sun. It's just harder to keep things even and balanced when the sun is totally uneven. And these paniculatas, they do like a good amount of sun, so I think that they would do better if I were to move them, because last year what I got out of them wasn't as good as what I've been getting prior, in the years prior. I just say that because the blooms that got out of these last year, it was nice, they were pretty, but it was nothing like in years prior when this was getting more sun. So I'd like to move them to a spot where they can grow and show off their full glory and have something maybe a little bit more simple and structured over here. Or maybe just do away with even having anything on each side of these stairs, period, and just moving up to having something planted where this uh, $25 trellises up there, the one I got off of Amazon a few years ago. It held up okay. The problem with this space here is that I wanted to have an archway that went over this for this honeysuckle to grow up. But the space is like from where it can go into the ground to in the ground, roughly eight and a half feet and arbors that big, they start at like a thousand dollars. And then the, you know, what was going on last year wasn't in a place where I was going to even try and build something. And again, the way the sun's changed, I need to move these honeysuckles. They're doing okay, but they're fine. They survived the winter okay, but I'm gonna get a blah, blah, blah. I will get a much better bloom out of them if I go ahead and move them to more sun. This is the major wheeler. They have gorgeous pink flowers on them in the spring, intermittently through summer, and they usually flush out again in the fall, which is why I love them because they just flower and flower and flower. And the blooms that come out of them look kind of like the Gartenmeister fuchsias, if you know what I'm talking about. Like, just sort of a tropical-ish kind of look to them. Pollinators absolutely love it. So these need to get dug up and moved. That'll be happening sometime in the next couple weeks. I want to do that before I start blooming. I probably should have done it in the fall, but you know, last fall, let's just leave it back there. Leave that in the fall. That takes me back to the uneven growth that I was talking about. How more sun over there than over here. So the honeysuckle vine not growing so much over here, growing plenty over there. So I would just like things to be more consistent in this area. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of work in this area. Really simple things though, that I think will make it look a lot better. The bench is gonna go, you know, I've talked about it for a couple years, but it's actually going to go, have a solid plan on that now. So that's going to go, I, that was, it belonged to my grandmother. I got it when she died, and then I recently found out that apparently she died on it. That was good to know. So that's, it's gotta go. It's falling apart. It doesn't even look good up there. So the plan is to get this place tidied up. I can see there's some of that Japanese honeysuckle, I think is what this is. I'm not positive. That's gotta go. I kind of battle that every year. It's a big invasive in this area. And I would like to go ahead and fill in this area. I'm gonna try and gently work the soil, add in some compost, and some things to help enrich it, get some gypsum down in there, and potentially landscape fabric. I don't think the sun is strong enough to even mess with that. I think that really just getting a layer of mulch up here will kill the grass down. I think it would though. I don't see that being a huge issue and fill this area in from like right here, coming down to this corner, get that filled in with some good soil and some mulch and take that all the way down to this wax, or it's not a wax myrtle, the, um, what are you? Or the bayberry, that's what that is, this shrub that's growing out and going towards the sun, which also is going to get a big prune, probably right about where my finger is, a major prune. I don't want to cut it out because it adds a lot of privacy, and you know, it takes a long time to get evergreen shrubs to fill in that kind of space, so it's staying, and I'm just gonna just have to fertilize it extra to make it work in that spot, I suppose. Once I have this area filled in with mulch and some soil, I would like to lightly landscape it, nothing too heavy, and then get some flagstone or something of the sort, just something steppable to work through and wind over and come over and back down to this area because that will flow through to this little bridge thing that's right there and kind of just make things flow in a nice way. I think that'll be a lot of fun. It will create a space where I can just kind of plop plants in 
that I like and not have to think about how they fit them with everything else in my other beds that are against the house. Of course, going to be working in as many evergreens as I can close to that fence. Probably skip laurels, something along those lines. I have like a list of different plants on order that are going to be going up here to start with. And it can just be a space to add to throughout the years. But I think that that would just look so much nicer than having that arch up there with this <laughs> like a glider that looks terrible and nobody ever uses because it's nasty and falling to pieces. And then open this space up. I don't know if I'm going to do all of the shady tropicals in the spot like I have in years past just because I like the way this wall looks when it's open and you can see those lines. It just looks so much nicer and cleaner. And then I can move those plants that would normally be right here, move those back into this landscape area. That's the idea anyways. It's been what I've wanted to do over here for a few years now. So I think it's time to go ahead and start working on that and get it done. First step being to get those honeysuckles out of there and start cleaning the space up. There's a buckeye back here. That's going to stay. It's one of my favorite plants. It's kind of scraggly and funny looking, but I got it as just a tiny little twig. It's going to be hard to get many shots of it because it's just now starting to flush out. It's a red buckeye. They're native. They have beautiful, beautiful red flowers on them. And they grow into a really nice looking tree that's easy to maintain a good shape on. So that's not going anywhere. It's going to have to be trained up so that there's a canopy to move around under if I want this to be a space where people can walk around. But that's not going because I'm really attached to that tree. And I really don't like removing trees if I don't have to, especially if they're native. So that's going to stay there. I would relocate it, but I don't really have any other spots where I think that it would fit and do well. It's done well up there. It's doing okay with the changing and sun over the years. It's still just like, I don't care. I'm going to keep growing. That's my kind of plant. I appreciate that. The plant with a good attitude. I like it. As I'm sure a lot of you are aware, having a consistent flow with plants in a spot where you have shade, and then sun, and then more sun, and then more shade can be tricky sometimes. Now, there are plenty of plants that can go sun or shade, like um, boxwoods, some hollies, arborvitaes, arborvitae, arborvitae, la la, you know what I'm talking about. But say if I were to plant a bunch of boxwoods over here on this end of the garden and on that end up there over on the side of the steps, they're still not going to really look the same because they just grow differently, whether from between shade in the sun. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Skip laurels. Love this hedge. One of my favorite things I've done out here. I know it's just a hedge, but it adds a good amount of privacy, and I think they're pretty. It's just something different as far as evergreens go. It's harder when you live in zone six and set really just anywhere north of zone seven to get a lot of variety with evergreens that aren't conifers, if you know what I mean. These can go sun to part shade somewhere in there, and the ones that get the most sun you see here, lots of growth on those, looking good. But as I move down here and start going towards where there's more shade, oh, 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 they get smaller and smaller. Still absolutely beautiful, love the shrubs, but having even growth where you have that shift can be difficult when it's all the same plant. So the focus up here in this area is gonna be more about balancing color and texture as opposed to having something that's really uniform and structured all the way through. I think that that'll be more of a headache and it's going to get in the way of me being able to get plants and just plop them in there because I want them. That's kind of what I want here is to have that blank canvas with some structure, some like solid plants up here. So I have a whole bunch of Akuba, Japonica, Mr. Gold Strikes that are going to go up here, possibly some sweet spires and various hardy begonias for some color. They have a really nice glossy green leaf on them that's just beautiful. It's nice and shiny and they have really pretty flowers on them too and they'll come back every year and I think that that will look nice and can add to it over the years and subtract from it. But the main thing is I still want it to stay fairly tidy because the staircase is the first thing you see when you walk into the backyard from the fence, from the gate that's in the driveway. Talking, I'm not with it today. It's not a great time for a garden tour. I think I say this every video. It's just, sometimes it's just a struggle. I don't know how to explain it. Back to the skip orals though. Look at them. They're looking great. They're all budded up. This will be their third year in the garden, I believe. Yeah, last year was their second year. What? No. How long have I had these? Who remembers when I planted these? 2019. So this will be their third year in the ground, but I wouldn't really consider them to be on their third year of growth until next year, if that makes sense. Regardless, they're flushing out nicely, filling out nicely. They haven't reached a height where I'm going to be comfortable pruning them. I want them to keep growing up some more because big leaves, big leaves are harder to hedge out and get a nice clean look on. So I want them to go ahead and get nice and big. I'll probably let them go another year's growth before I start doing much pruning on these. They're starting to pop out. 
their spring flowers, which is really exciting. The pollinators always love these. These will keep going up and up and up. That inflorescence will just have lots of little white flowers on them. And then they get cute little berries on them. The wildlife seems to enjoy those. The only problem I've had here with this entire berm is gravity. Things are slowly melting this way, so I suppose I should have planted them back another, gosh, probably two feet. I had them planted like right on the top of this berm, but I guess it was just a smidge too far this way, and now they're, the whole berm is sort of shifting down this way. So that's why I've been trying to make sure I stay on top of the mulching and anything that can help prevent the runoff and that shifting. That's about all you can do. Otherwise you have to go in and use like big gravel. They're like erosion materials you can put in, but they're not that attractive for a garden. This is a mess, but it's all, this is all gonna be changing drastically this year. So I'm not even gonna focus on that right now. Lots of fun stuff going on here. One of the best parts of spring, the thing that I love the most in this garden is when the pedicets start coming up. In the March, April, and May garden tours, I usually talk about them a lot because they just do so much. One of the first things to come up in the garden, they have really cool flowers on them. Let me get down here. Got to squat down. They start off with these really cool flowers. See, there's one right there. Isn't it pretty? They have them all the way throughout the berm. And that's the first thing that comes up before any of the foliage. And there are different types of flowers because I planted different types here. There's the variegated Pedicits japonicus, which are right here. See, cute little variegated leaf on there. Really pretty plants. Those leaves are going to get much, much, much bigger over the next several weeks. And then there's one that's called Curly Q and then Gigantia, which I think they changed the name on, but that's why there's different flowers here. See the white flower and then the ones with the purple flowers tend to come up a little bit later. Let me see if there's one I can get a closer shot of. Okay, yeah. Over here, the Gigantia variety, which I think think is maybe another curly Q. I just said that. I can't remember. They have a more simple green leaf on them that's large, really big leaves on them. They don't have that nice reflection that the variegated ones have for the shade. These are great shade plants or part shade, I should probably say. They can go deep shade, but they look better in part shade. Just my opinion. They have the coolest flowers. Isn't that neat? Sorry, it's shaky. I'm leaning pretty far over, but really cool flowers come up fairly tall with all those little tiny white flowers in them. The inflorescence is what's neat with those little white flowers. These are a plant that will spread and naturalize an area, which is fine. That's why I planted them. But my intention was for them to spread and naturalize up this hill and have like a drift of them. It looks so neat when they do that, especially if you can get them up into the shady areas. It helps lighten things up and draw the eye back there to where things are dark. And they're doing what I hope they would. They're starting to spread more in this direction and they're starting to pop up here on the hill, which is great. Cause like I said, I want them to go up this hill and fill in that gap up there. They have really big, round, bold leaves variegation on some of them and not variegation on the other ones. They're beautiful either way. They have a fine tropical appeal to them. They look kind of like if you've ever seen how pothos will naturalize an area, take over an area really. Looks similar to that but different. It's sort of a dupe if you live someplace where you can't grow tropical plants it'll give you that sort of jungly vibe. At least that's how I see it. I think that they just look fun. But they're not supposed to be here. <laughs> it was never the plan. So what I'll potentially be doing this year is giving these just probably another month or so to grow so that I can actually tell where each individual plant is. And I'm probably going to lift those and plug them in up here on this hill like I was talking about. Probably down lower because that soil still needs a lot of work on it. Maybe I'll take some of it up a little bit further. It can go and spread around the back of the berm. I'm fine with that. But I really would prefer to fill this entire area, this whole front of this berm up with impatiens and caladiums. I think that would look really nice. It'd be a huge pop of color. Help draw the pollinators in. Even if impatiens aren't their favorite plants, it's like a big signal to them in the sky. All that color helps bring them in. And I have lots of plants out here for the pollinators. So whether they flock to those plants or not, I just like to have some big drifts of really intense color. I guess it's not necessarily intense color if I'm talking whites and pinks and purples. I just mean, you know, a whole plethora, a fun rainbow of things going on over here. So that will probably happen. There are some ostrich ferns in here. I don't know if they're going to come up or not. I, it's a little bit early to say. Usually they're starting to show some life by now, but it was a really bad February and they got somewhat choked out by the pedicets last year because they grew like insanity, like I've never seen before because we had a really great mild spring with a good amount of precipitation and they just, they absolutely loved it. They love those conditions and they showed it last year. They went 
berserk. So this is, it's a mess, but it's all, this is all going to be changing here pretty soon. In a few weeks, we'll get some color here. What I'm going for in the yard this year is I want to start to be able to see the lines of the structures again. So there's a lot of old broken furniture. It's going to go, I'll, you know, give it away. People who think they can fix it, stuff like that. Take care of the loungers. I don't lay out. I don't need those. It's taking up space, valuable space to be used for plants that don't need that. I'm really happy to have the mulch done. That got done nice and early, but one problem is that I hadn't gotten through and fertilized this head yet. So I'm going to have to come through and pull some of that mulch back and get some, uh, I'm going to use probably holly tone. I have a whole bunch of holly tone get some of that spread out each one of these skip whorls because I think they could use it. Typically I'll do a compost with some sort of slow or continuous release organic fertilizer around these with any of my shrubs, my evergreens. They always seem to appreciate it. it makes a big difference in their growth for the year. Helps promote nice sturdy roots and healthy greens. Helps get them through any rough winters. This spot's pretty exposed. You can see the wind blowing through here right now. So that was one thing I was really hesitant with when I was deciding what to plant here for just to get a privacy screen was that I had to factor in really dry cold winds during the winter time. And they did fine with this last winter it was pretty bad, about as bad as it gets here. And I, not much damage. There's a little bit. Let's see there's some, but really not bad. I'd say they held on really well considering. The back of the berm starting to fill in with wild strawberries. This time of year I have to stay really on top of using the burnout and getting the there's the silver lace vine that shows up all out throughout here. So I'm trying to stay on top of that. I've already sprayed three times and nothing's happened but I'm using my burnout from last year. So I think I just need to go get a new bottle because it, clearly it's not working. The wild strawberries I usually will let go and do their thing into the lawn. The rabbits really seem to appreciate it and they enjoy it but when it comes up into the garden bed you have to stay somewhat on top of it oh it can like go over the edge here that's fine i don't think i want it to take over the whole thing because once that stuff starts going it keeps going they will take over pool's still not open but will be soon i mean it's the covers off it's got water in it but the plumbing that's not going yet it doesn't matter it's not quite warm enough to get in there yet anyways and not much to report on in the beds against the house from there all the way over here just not much happening the bananas not showing any signs of life i don't think they're dead but I uh, will be surprised if any of those pseudo stems survive that cold blast, that two week long cold blast in February. I don't know. There's a big pile of mulch here, but I'll be surprised. I've reached down in there. I went in like way down deep with my fists and was squeezing around and all I felt was mush. Didn't feel anything solid. It's okay. That happens sometimes. These are fully capable of dying down to the ground, the baju bananas and getting pretty big the next year. I could probably still get at least 10 feet out of these, even if they die down on the ground. These are nice big established clumps. I say clumps because there's one here and then there's another one over here. I'm doing everything's changing with the pool equipment too. Found a new spot where I'm going to be keeping all of that so that this area will be nice and clean. Won't have my barrel out here. This barrel is what all the leaf debris goes in from the pool when it gets cleaned out. I think it would just make more sense to just keep that in the driveway. It's not as convenient, but I'm tired of looking at it. It looks stupid. Same thing with those pool nets. I don't want to see those anymore. This area, which got done last summer, held on just fine. There were four sable miners, one, two, three, four, and two needle palms in the back there. They all did okay. They got covered during that arctic blast just to be safe. I vlogged all of that. I still need to bring the lights in. I have lights wrapped around them so I'm gonna try and get on top of that. This had a lot of spring bulbs in it that did not survive that cold. They just turned to mush but I have some tulips that I started to force a few weeks ago that I might go ahead and fill this in with. I might use another planter. I don't know. This will get pushed back and centered. I put this on top here hoping I could wake the plants up that were in there but no luck. No dice, just dirt. That black pot sitting there is a marker for something else that you have to wait to find out about for another time. Because it's not set in stone. Not because I'm trying to tease you because I don't want to say I'm going to be doing something if it's not really going to happen. Also, on that note, let's take everything I've said so far, all the stuff about what's going on over here, with a grain of salt. <laughs> Everything's going to be a work in progress. These are plans of things I'm going to be working on throughout the summer. It's not going to be like one huge reveal. That's just not really reality with gardening unless you have a huge budget. And I don't want to do it that way. I want to have an area that I can just play with. And that's what's going to be going on over here and over here too. Kind of skipped over, not skipped over. I didn't even talk about it. Up here, I am going to use this as sort of a test area. I want to see how the soil works and how things are going to go. Because there's some big drains right over here and over here. Because all these houses up here, there's a house here, a house there, another house over there. They all drain into this backyard. So there's drains up here on the hill and then down here in this gravel ditch which can make planting 
kind of tricky because there's a lot of inconsistencies with the soil and the soil up there is rock solid. It's like all been compacted from construction that was done over the years. There's a layer of gravel behind this wall that extends out about a foot behind it and it's really not very plantable. I've tried, some things do well, not a lot. Les Bedeza, it doesn't care. It's like the honey badger of plants. It just grows and grows and grows. I thought this would be a fun spot to just play with some seeds. So I'm going to work that soil, try and make sure that drain gets cleared out because I don't want things flooding over the wall here. And I'm probably going to be doing a lot of zinnias and cosmos and cut flowers and plant them sequentially so I can keep going through and playing with them throughout the year. I am probably going to put some nepeta up here too for the pollinators. I had Asclepius planted up here last year, Tuberosa, which is a native here. I don't know if it's going to come back yet. It's still too soon to tell. Hopefully it does, because I had it planted as a nice little swoop that went through here. We will see. I'm hopeful, but it was a rough winter and the spot's kind of exposed, but I mean, the needle palm did okay. It has some shelter from that spruce, but not a lot. Not much when you're considering negative temperatures for several days. But when I have an area that I haven't planted in, I usually like to just gently work that soil and take a year and play with seeds and other just kind of fun, cheaper things, if you know what I mean, to see what works and what doesn't work and get a better idea of what's going on with the soil before I invest in too many expensive perennials to put in the area. I thought that would be a fun thing to do here. The spring planter from a few weeks ago, still looking good, getting some growth out of it. I have it sitting on the ground here because the Gerber daisies were starting to be a little bit upset from one night of cold we had and it's warmer to have them down here than up exposed on the table and they've perked back up since I've done that so I think I, it should be safe enough now. I think the coldest night we have coming is like 38 or 39 which is totally fine for what's in here. I was more just thinking about some other plants that I might be moving out here soon. And I need a couple more days to think about that. That'll all be in this weekend's vlog. And here are those Akubas. These are the Akuba Japonica Mr. Gold Strikes. This is what I was talking about that are going to be going up in that area where that glider is that's getting thrown out. I have one, two, three, I think I have six of them to go up in that area. I think they'll do well up there. They're kind of hit or miss where I live. I had one that I left outside in the pot because the pot got frozen to the ground during that really cold blast in February, and it did okay. I mean, not great, but considering it was in a pot with negative temperatures, I'm pretty impressed. I had grown the gold strikes years ago, early 2000s, and they did well for like four or five years, and then we had a couple bad winters, and they just slowly kept dying back. But those couple bad winters we had were not as bad as what we just dealt with in February. So perhaps they've improved them, I'm not sure. They're good zone seven and up. Zone six, they're kind of like a roll the dice plant. They should be good, but if you have a really bad winter, maybe not. They are good to put in a somewhat sheltered spot if you really want to be safe. Make sure that there's not too much wind blowing on them and during the winter. In a spot that's a little bit warmer than the rest of the garden, which I don't think that that hill is going to be warmer than the rest of the garden. In fact, it's probably one of the coldest spots that we have, but I love these shrubs and that's where I want to put them. So I'm going to put them up there, see what happens. If I need to wrap them the first few years with some frost cloth, that's okay. It's not a big deal. It's really easy to do. I think I need to get this cleaned out. That's looking pretty gross. I just plugged it in to see if the pump was working. That No, 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 no. No, there's no frogs in there, buddy. Buddy, there's no frogs in there. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Get out of here. Looking pretty gross. No big deal. That's normal spring stuff. I'll try and shield my mic as much as I can. There's something starting to roll in it looks for like from the radar it's going to roll in and roll out that doesn't have anything to do with anything hopefully the wind won't be too bad ponds looking good i do need to come in here and cut out all of the dead cattails but the water lilies are down there they're doing okay i don't think you're going to be able to see because there's a lot of reflection but they're starting to pop open with some life for springtime and the fish are doing their thing there's a peltendra in there which is like a type of aeroid that has i don't know how to describe it it's a cool looking plant that's starting to come up. You can see that new growth starting to pop up there. And I'm noticing a pot of some sort that's fallen in there I'm going to need to pull out. It looks like it has Creeping Jenny in it, and I don't know what else, so I need to figure that out. But the fish are all good, they seem happy. I know, can't really see them, but they're in there. Oh, the pollinator garden. Not much to look at, things are still waking up. This is another area where I let, you can see here, the wild strawberries. I just let them come in. They can grow. It's fine. There's always a lot of rabbits that frolic around through the grass back there and they come through. They munch on them, seem to enjoy them. They don't quite keep them like 
in check. They still spread, but not too terribly. Hydrangeas are starting to wake up. There's one right there, and then there's another one right down here, starting to slowly flush back out. And I don't see any action from the hibiscus, but that's totally normal. I can cut this all the way down to the ground. That's uh, machetos, I believe. It's not going to start doing anything until it gets nice and warm outside. I expect to see something happening there probably mid to late May, hopefully. Just once the ground gets warm, it'll wake up. There's some nepeta coming up and some salvia and a whole bunch of just all kinds of fun things. It's all hidden here under the pine straw. This is an area that I tend to just let go pretty wild. It's mostly here for the butterflies, the bees. This is an area where I tend to plop things in here that I think will be beneficial for the pollinators or they're just plants that I want to grow but they don't necessarily fit into other spots of the landscaping. This spot's somewhat tucked away and hidden from the rest of the yard so you have to come over here and stand back to observe it which I kind of like. There's something fun about that. I know it's not much to look at. I should probably throw something small and evergreen into the mix here. Maybe something with some thorns on it for the birds. They always like things with thorns to hide in. I would like to maybe get some um, coral berry or beauty berries, something up here with some fruit on it that the wildlife would enjoy. But for now, it's pretty good. It's always a work in progress. There's some Creeping Jenny volunteering itself in there, which is fine. Do your thing, Creeping Jenny. I don't care. The more the merrier. I love that stuff. I use it in all kinds of planters. It's nice to be able to have a whole bunch. You can just pick it up, rip it out of the ground, throw it into pots. It looks nice. This is the area where I sprinkled a whole bunch of poppy seeds back, I don't know, a few weeks ago and I wasn't sure how they would do because I hadn't really exposed them to cold and it was a little bit late to get them into the ground. Those poppy seeds are starting to come up. It's going to be really hard to see with this camera. I'm going to put some footage up here from my phone to make it easier to see. There's a lot though. They're just getting going. There's a patch of them coming up right over here. I'm starting to just now see some of them back over here and up here. They're so tiny. I don't know if there's even a point in talking about it. Some back here and some, just a few down here. I had sprinkled them throughout this entire front end. I wanted them to be back a little bit further. It's the problem with poppies. It's really hard to tell where you're putting them, but I'm just happy any of them are coming up. I'll give it several weeks before I start pinching them back or thinning them out in any kind of way. I'm just going to let them do their thing. It can be tricky here because we never know if it's going to be nice and mild or if it's going to be really hot and humid. And there's always animals running around through here too and they tend to tear things up. Don't you buddy? You do that? Yeah, you do that. He's pretty good though about staying on the wall when he comes over here. But at some point there might be another dog here gonna have to teach him to go around the garden. Don't know how well that's going to go. We will see. Oleander sitting up here on the wall looking pretty good. Had a little bit of damage from things getting kind of dry when I brought them out. The air was really dry. It was super windy and these can usually take those conditions but I think it was just too much of a shock form from what they had been experiencing in the growth space but I mean they're looking pretty good. Nice lush green growth filling out nicely. I'm gonna come in here pretty soon and clean out any old spent flower heads. I want to take this one, see if there's any viable seed in there. This variety is one that I have not seen since I got it. It was called Maui Sunrise, and I can't, I don't, it's like doesn't exist, but I can find Hawaii Sunrise, which looks very similar. So maybe it was mislabeled. That's potentially what's going on there. It has gorgeous corally pinky flowers on it. It has a horrible growth habit though. It's not one to plant if you want a nice shapely looking bush. This one's pretty ugly as far as that's concerned. But the flowers are so pretty that I just don't care that it's pretty unruly and has this wide wild shape to it. And it's an oleander. I can go through here. I could prune this up pretty heavily and get it to fill back out. I did that lightly last year. I'll probably do it again this year, go through and give it a good trim, help encourage it to fill out some more. I love oleanders. I have ordered several of the Austin City Limits. I think that's what they're called, oleanders from Proven Winners. I'm anxious to see how those do. They're gonna come in teeny tiny little plants, but they grow fairly quickly. I might plop some in the ground, let them do their thing and try and dig them up about six weeks before we have frost to bring them inside. But they're so easy to overwinter, very easy to overwinter. Oh, I see some seeds in there. I need to get a baggie out here and get those clipped off. The City Limits, the Austin City Limits has a nice shape to it and it's supposed to flower like really heavily, very reliably, and it keep its nice shape and like sturdy growth that doesn't flop over too much. So I look forward to that. But you know, the oleanders, they are toxic. So I don't take them into my house. For the most part, my animals tend to leave the plants alone that are toxic. I don't have little kids running around here, so I don't really 
worry about the toxicity aspect very much because it just hasn't ever been an issue. Somehow they seem to know, but it's always worth mentioning because if you have <laughs> an animal who's having a day, just take a bite of it, and that can make them sick. Lots of vomiting and every body, like biological system, reacts differently. So it could be a lot worse than some nausea and irritation, you know, it could kill them. So that's why these stay out in my garage. And they do fine. I don't even put them in an area with much light. They just hang out and chill for the majority of the winter. They get splashed with water maybe, like I'd say, every three weeks. They get a small drink. They come from areas where they can handle those conditions as long as it's not very hot. So the temperature stays pretty cool where they are in the garage. And they just get a little drink every now and then. They do wonderfully. I've got another one up there. Not going to be able to see it. I'm excited to get the seeds out of there. I don't know how well they're going to do, how viable they will be. But I intentionally left the flower heads on them in the fall to see what would happen. So that's exciting. The fall planters, not looking so good. Looking pretty rough. This one, despite having the frost-proof sticker on it, clearly that was a lie. I mean, look at that. It just fell apart right here. I can glue that back on. I suppose. I don't know. Not thrilled that that happened, but is what it is. All that survived here in the pumpkin were some sedums. Looks like there might be a little sprig of pansy in there and maybe some creeping jenny that, no, the creeping jenny's in the pot behind it. So I need to get these cleaned out and put away all of the succulents that are in here. I'll just pluck them out and put them over with the rest of my sedums. Not a single one of my Ascot Rainbow Euphorbias survived that cold blast that we had. And I had moved this one to a protected spot, but still... It's looking pretty shabby. There is still some sturdy growth down in here. Not much, but there's a little bit, so I might be able to give that a cut back and move it into some strong sun, make sure it gets plenty of heat, and maybe it'll come back. I don't know, hopefully. And then this one, everything in here just died, which is what was to be expected. No big deal. Just another thing that needs to get cleaned out and put away. Sable Palmetto has some nice new growth coming out the top, which is pretty exciting. I have had this in the ground for years. Like... I want to say at least eight or nine years, and it's never done much. But over the past couple years, it started to speed its growth up, and I barely have to protect this thing. It is really, really hardy. Extremely sturdy, but still a baby, growing like a snail. And that happens when you only have a few months of active growing because it's cold the rest of the year, right? Oh, and then the needle palms. They're fine. We've talked about them a bunch. They did okay throughout the cold blast. There's some damage to some of the fronds, but for the most part, considering how cold it was, not too bad. Oh, the Rostratas. I always forget to talk about these in the garden tours. This one here in the pot looks great. Potted this one up in a video a couple years ago during the winter time. It has done quite well. It's really happy. It's got lots of old leaf bases hanging on over that fun, like spiky sort of textured trunk that it has. Looking great. And then there are the other two that I experimented with having outside when it was colder and not looking so hot. And this one will be fine. It's gonna flush out new growth and be okay. I let this one go down to 20, which they can go way colder than that, but I, these were just like, they were dug up from the desert. They're not used to cold weather. So it's gonna take them time to get adjusted to be able to take those cold temperatures. So that one doesn't look great. And then there's this one right here, which I left out last year until it got down to 10 degrees. And well, it's, its head fell off. That's okay. It's growing a new one out the side, but that was too much. Won't do that again. You can see some pretty big differences here. This one stays in the growth space all winter. Looks nice. Lovely blue color to it. And then there's these two. You, you see why I prefer to just keep them in a pot and scoot them on inside? It's easy enough to do. They can stay outside most of the year. It's only for like two months they need to come in and look at how much better it looks. A tremendous difference, right? Got a pot full of hookers here that all overwintered last year. They look okay. I left them outside. I didn't cover them like I really should have. Normally with the perennials, I'll leave them out and then when the temperatures look like they're going to get really severely cold or if we're going to have ice, then I'll throw something over them. With the hookers, they're so tough. I was just like, they'll be fine. And they were. They're totally fine. They're still coming out of their winter lull so they look a little bit rough but this is i mean this isn't that bad considering it's just march this is hookra primo wild rose yeah it's nice deep foliage isn't that beautiful it's so pretty and then this one is the uh, primo peachberry ice which i think has awesome foliage on it and this is last year's foliage so it doesn't look that great but it's kind of a coppery sort of an orange color with I mean, you can see it it's beautiful but it's even more intense than this when you get it into the sun I like to have them about part sun 
and they're just glorious. Really nice, gorgeous foliage on those. I don't remember what this one was. It was a random hooker that I got from Woods. I think it was called like avocado or something like that. Let me see if I can find a tag. Let's see there. Okay, guacamole. Hey, I wasn't that far off. Guacamole, avocado, potato, potato. Not really. You get it. Those are just going to get prettier and prettier the more time goes on. And I think that's everything. The bonsais did these in a video last year. I had these covered up for the winter. Still can find they have a little bit of burn on them. Burns, not the end of the world. These, just like I was doing with the perennials, when it gets really, really cold, like below, since these are in shallow pots, below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, I take these and make sure that they're covered up just to be safe because those, you know, they're really exposed in these pots. They're boxwoods. They can take a good amount of cold, but they're going to be so prone to drying out a lot faster than the other plants because they're in a bonsai mix that dries really quickly. And the brown tips aren't a big deal, especially because you can see on here they already have a whole bunch of new growth coming up. At least this one does. This one doesn't have much going on with new growth. Maybe a little bit, but it has some berries and flowers getting ready to pop open there. And this one needs a top dressing. Look at how much soil got eroded and worked out of there during the winter time. There's a lot of exposed root there, which is okay. Those will slowly die off and then there'll just be even more to look at up there. The majority of the roots are down below, so I'm not too concerned about that, but it would just look nice to have that top dress. I'm not looking at that. It would look better to have it covered up. And I think everything else that's out here, we've already talked about in the last video. Some things going off the azaleas, they're waking up. The rosemary that I thought would have died with that cold snap in February. If you watch me like pack all the plants from all the frost cloths and wrappings, this still has the green on it and it's definitely still alive. I was on the fence as to whether or not that was just green foliage that hadn't burnt out yet from the cold, but it's still on there. There's still some flex in these branches. And I think, I'm gonna watch the forecast for one more week, but I think it should be good to go ahead and give this a really heavy prone and let what has survived go ahead and fill back out in here. This is only on here because I thought it'd be good to just leave it as a windscreen since we're, we weren't out of winter yet. But we're not going to have any temperatures anywhere near comparable to what this has already been through. So I'd probably come in here and get all that cleaned out, wouldn't you think? Should be all right. I'm shocked that any of it survived period with that kind of cold. Oh, my hand smells so good now. Getting ready to do some things here with the windmill palms talk about that in another video. It's going to be kind of a long drawn out explanation. That's pretty much it. Nothing else has shown much to talk about or done any growing that's worth talking about. I did talk about in the last vlog how I was surprised that this, whoa that was loud, about this lemon coral sedum having pushed through that really bad cold that we had because they're zone seven, we're in zone six, but this one clump seemed to be sheltered enough. I'm not seeing anything else going on over here just yet. Still need to wait a few weeks. The ground hasn't warmed up. And I look forward to seeing what happens out here. It's going to be interesting. So I've had the bananas and the bikini teeny colocasias and lots and lots of gingers out here for several years. Several, like a decade. After last winter, I don't know. We will see. Luckily, I have some uh, hedichiums, gingers that I dug up and put in the garage just to be safe. I do it every year just to be safe, just to have that extra bunch of rhizomes in case we have a bad winter where they don't come back. So I'll have at least one clump of those gingers out here or two, because my friend, if you watched the last video, sent me a giant rhizome of some Hedichum gardeniriums, and those are going to be beautiful in the garden. I can't wait to get that planted, which I will also be doing in the next vlog. Yeah, sorry, it's not the most pretty garden tour. It's just that time of year. It always amuses me whenever I do a March garden tour. There's usually some kickback about how I need to plant things in my garden. I'm like, okay, nothing wrong with being new, but here's how plants work. Some of them die down to the ground and your garden's bare during the winter time if you don't have lots of evergreens. Just throwing that out there. This is not a representation if you're new here. This isn't what the garden looks like during the summer. It's very, very, very different. Oh, the dune grass is starting to come up. That, how have I not noticed that? Okay, so this, I need to get in here and trim all that brown stuff out. It's really a lot easier to do that before it starts to come up. I leave it during the winter just to help protect it. And um, yeah, I need to do that like right now because if I don't, then all that brown stuff is gonna be hard to get out from the new growth that's starting to come up. But that's fine. Look at it, it's starting to make a really nice drift across the front of this planting bed. Nice swoop that will get nice and tall. Pretty blue stems with fun seed heads that blow in the wind. I know at least that survived the winter. That's good. I wonder about the banana cannas. I put banana cannas on each side of this fence. I don't know. We'll see. April and May should be fun because there will be a lot of stuff coming up and growing. Well, hopefully. Like I said, 
We're gonna have to wait and see. Okay, that's gonna do it. Clouds are rolling in. I think some spring rain's coming through. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below who's excited about spring. I'm floored. Like, I just, I cannot wait to get my hands dirty. I'm gonna start working on some planters here pretty soon just because I feel like planting things. Not because I need the planters. It's just, you know, that gardening urge where you just wanna get dirty. Oh, I cannot wait to start getting things cleaned up and tidied, which like I said, gonna get that ball rolling in the next vlog. How many times have I said that? I'm not trying to promote you to watch the next vlog. I'm just explaining, hey, things are messy right now, but it's gonna get better. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep, uh-oh, I need to water this one. Oops. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.